A derby demolition, a first-team opportunity, perhaps opening up, and Harvey Elliott doing his thing in the championship. Welcome to the Academy Show here on the Blood Red Channel. I'm Guy Clark, alongside me, Matt Addison, as we check in on the latest at Kirby and further afield with all the news from Liverpool's budding youngsters. Matt, it's uh, it's been a busy weekend. We're going to get to all of that. But since we last spoke, there's been plenty going on with the age group sides. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, been a busy weekend, a very positive weekend for, for Liverpool and, and plenty of things, as you say, since the last show, which was only a, around a month or so ago, wasn't it? But plenty of things that have happened. I mean, I'll start with the, the 23s. I think that makes sense. I think, you know, since we, we last spoke, they lost 3-2 to, to Tranmere. Um, well, that was the, the under-21s, wasn't it, really, in the uh, the EFL trophy. Jake Kane continuing his good form with a, a goal in that. But, uh, yeah, a, a late winner, really. It's slightly unfortunate for them, but... It is a, a big sort of step forward from that 6-1 result that we talked about last time. That came, of course, against Wigan. Both of those sort of senior teams, Tranmere and Wigan, so a difficult sort of a opponent for, for those youngsters to, to play. Both of them, uh, both of the, the teams that faced, you know, each of, of Wigan and Tranmere was you know, a relatively inexperienced side from, from Barry Luter. So it was uh, a big step forward, a, a big improvement for them. And, Elsewhere, they, they've also beaten Salford City 5-0 in a friendly and, and lost 1-0 at Brighton. So, kind of uh, mixed results, I think, up until this weekend. But uh, I'll uh, wait to, to discuss this weekend in a little bit of, of time. Just to, to quickly touch on the, the under-18s as well. They've won 3-0 at, at Blackburn, similar to Jake Kane. Excellent form for, for Leighton Stewart. A hat-trick for him in that one. 3-2 then against Sunderland. Two more for, for Leighton Stewart and, and one for Ethan Ennis as well. That was his first goal at, at that level. And a debut for, for Terence Miles as well, who actually scored on Saturday for the under-16s. They beat Everton by a goal to nil this weekend. And, and he scored an excellent goal in that one as well. So, yeah, a few uh, a few new names that we haven't touched on before, but certainly a lot of, of promising signs for, for the academy teams, even if the results have been a little bit more mixed. Yes, certainly the case. And uh, just to anyone, obviously the, the seniors have had the Champions League, of course, taking place. Normally we had the uh, UEFA Youth League. Anyone listening in who's wondering why that didn't take place? Uh, could you fill in the blanks? Yeah, it was uh, something that I'd kind of forgotten about until a couple of weeks ago when that Champions League draw took place. UEFA have took the decision, obviously, with COVID restrictions and, and sort of travel bans and that sort of thing to hold the tournament in a, a slightly different way. So normally, as has been the case since, I think, 2013, when the, the competition first came into existence, the UEFA Youth League, it would be a, a Liverpool under-19s team would play the exact same teams that Liverpool have played in the group. So normally they would have played in the afternoon on Wednesday against an Ajax under-19s team. But that, of course, didn't happen this time around. Due to COVID, as I say, instead, it will be a straight knockout tournament and that will take place next year, hopefully in March or April. I suppose that depends on, on whether COVID restrictions are different to what they are now and, and that sort of thing. But UEFA haven't forgotten about it. They don't want to, to disregard it completely for this year because it is such a, an important competition, as we've talked about plenty of times. You look at someone like Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, for example, which, you know, we're, we're going to get onto the performances of, of him later. But, you know, both of those players have, have really, really benefited from playing in that competition. So it would be a shame if, if it didn't happen. As it is, it's penciled in for, for next year, March and April, as I say, and it will be a slightly different format, but, you know, better than, than nothing, certainly. Yeah, certainly the case. Before we go any further then and heading onto the continent, since we last checked in on the Academy and the Academy show here on Blood Red, Matt's been speaking with former Red youngster Edvard Tagseth, who's now back in his native Norway, having taken the brave move of rejecting a contract with the Reds back in June 2019. Obviously, you're back in Norway now, having uh, left Liverpool last summer. You're starting for, for Rosenborg. How are you uh, enjoying that? Are you enjoying your football? Yeah, I am. Uh, I was uh, I was really looking forward to getting back to Norway and you know being closer to my family and friends and uh, of course playing football here as well. So it's been uh, a good almost year and a half and uh, the football's been been going good as well. Especially this season, I've been playing a lot, so I'm really happy with the, how I'm doing at the moment. Yeah, I believe you, you turned down the offer of a, a new contract uh, at Liverpool. Why was it that you decided to, to make the move away in the end? Uh, you know, there's, there's loads of reasons. Uh, I struggle a lot with injuries at Liverpool. And, and when that happens, you don't play as much as you want to. And uh, 
you know, the only reason I went to Liverpool was to to play football, and uh, when that didn't happen, I uh, I thought my my future there wasn't going to be me in the first team or or starting with the 23. So I thought I will try something new and uh, play first team football. And uh, I think Rosenborg was the best option for me because I knew most of the lads here, the the young boys, and talk with the coach, I had a good chat with them and, you know, closer to my family as well. So, which was important to me after almost four years, you can say, away from them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, in terms of the injuries and, and that sort of thing, is that all Is that all better now? You're all fully fully fit and, and playing every week? Yeah. Uh, well, not playing every week. I'm, uh, I've been on the bench to the, to the latest games, but uh, my injuries have, uh, have settled, you can say. I've been fit almost every day since I came here and uh, I think part of it is the the playing style is different there in Norway it's so physical in England and the gym the gym work you do all the running it's it's hard uh, but my body's been, been doing good now so I'm happy with it yeah I mean Liverpool offered you a new contract they must have, have been pretty keen for you to stay it must have been a, a pretty big decision for you to, to leave a club like Liverpool I believe you were a Liverpool fan uh, growing up and that sort of thing so it, it must have been quite hard for you to make that choice yeah of course uh, I just think long about it uh, I remember the day I called my parents and, and told them that you know I made my decision now I'm, I think I'm going to leave this summer and it was really hard uh, but it was I think it was good for my family to hear it because I think they saw it on me that I wasn't enjoying myself as much as they would hope I did and uh, yeah but of course I, mi- I miss it a lot I miss when I see uh, Reese coming on yesterday and I miss him I miss all my friends there and the coaches and everything so uh, really tough decision but I'm happy I did it yeah, I was going to ask you about Reese. Obviously, a Champions yeah. League debut. He's someone that that you will know really well. I mean, that must have been an amazing moment for for you to watch him do that because that's the dream for for every young player coming through, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I had the game on in the background. I was uh, doing something else on the computer, and uh, I heard there was a sub going on, and I I didn't hear his name, so I I just watched the, uh, the telly and uh, saw Reese standing there, and it was wow. Uh, it was amazing to see, and you know he won some uh, headers there as well when he came on. That would, it's uh, it was just like seeing him in the under under eighteen. So it was really nice to see. Yeah, with his hair, I, th- I always think he looks a bit like Virgil Van Dijk when he's yeah, on the it pitch. Does. I mean, he does definitely. <laughs> How good do you think he can become? Can he, you know, reach the the top level and and play for Liverpool consistently? Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, at under 18s and when he's played up with the 23s as well when I was there he, he was always dominant in the air and his physicality and see very good on the ball as well so I've always thought that he will become a top top player and Curtis Jones as well he started for, for Liverpool yesterday I'm sure you will have played with him well in fact I've seen you play with him plenty <laughs> of, of times at the academy so uh, what sort of a player is he because he's you know progressed a lot over the last 12 months or so yeah, uh, I mean, when I first came to, to Liverpool when I was 14, I could see straight away that he was the main man and he was by far the best player. Uh, and he he continued to develop when I was there. And when I when I moved there when I was 16, he was, what can I say, the best player I played with, one of them at least. He's, uh, he's definitely up there. And when you see him play first team games and when he comes on, you can, see, you can see that he has the Premier League level in already now, and uh, I think it was only sixteen, seventeen when he when he went to Melbourne and, and started training there. So yeah, he's a really, really good player, and uh, it was a pleasure playing with him. He seems to be a really confident person, a really sort of you know on the ball and off the pitch as well. He, he seems to be really assured and, and much older mm. than than his actual age. I mean. Is that a fair assessment? Do you think? Obviously, you've spent a lot more time with him than I have. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, you know, he's he's very confident outside the pitch, on the pitch, but he's very he expects a lot from you. Even when we were under sixteen, he 
he expects a lot from you in training and uh, I think that's probably what's what's made him the player he is today. He expects a lot from himself as well. And uh, he was always a player, even though he's a dribbler and stuff like that, he was always a player who gave 100% in training and he runs a lot and he, he does the defensive work as well. So, yeah. Yeah, and Liverpool's midfield at senior level now is a, a very difficult one to, to get into. But Curtis Jones, it, it seems to be that, that he is going to be a regular option for Jurgen Klopp these days. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, I think if he continues his uh, development now over the next few years, he's, he'll probably be a, a starter there soon, I think. So, uh, yeah, it's really good to see. Yeah, excellent stuff. I mean, obviously he and yourself played under Steven Gerrard and that was a, a big thing, obviously, for, for both of your developments, I, I would think. I mean, what was it like to, to play under somebody like him? Because, I mean, that, for any Liverpool fan, must be a, an absolute dream. Yeah, it was... Uh, it's it's even crazier now when, when I can look back at it because when you're there in the moment and over that year I had with him, it's... Uh, it got more and more normal for every day you met him and every day on the training ground and every game. So it's really a amazing experience and something I, I will never forget. And uh, it was just an honor to have him as my coach. And uh, I thought I think uh, everyone else thought the same. So uh, and he's doing really good now as well. So uh, it's it's uh, it was uh, an honor to have him as my coach. Yeah, I mean, what what was he like on a day to day basis? Was he, you know, similar to, to other coaches that you'd had at, at the academy as well, or, or was there something you know different about the way that he went about things? Uh, you know, they're all great coaches at the academy. I think uh, all the coaches I had I had a good relationship with, and but like the thing with Stephen, he was really demanding. He knew what what the players what he wanted the players to do and he expected a lot from us even though we were only 16, 17, 18 but the thing that maybe impressed me the most was how humble he was outside the pitch. He could take you to the side one, uh, one v one and just talk to you and tell you what you need to improve on what you've been doing well and he was, he was really good with me. I think from day one we had a good relationship and I think he trusted me, so it was really nice to see, and it makes you feel confident yourself. So, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a great coach. Have you had any contact with him since he, he left at all, or is that sort of not something that, that might happen? No. Uh, he came back to the academy a few times after he left, so the, the second year I was there. Uh, and same again, He it's not like he doesn't remember you when he comes back. He... He gives you a hug and uh, he asks you how how it's been going and stuff like that. So it was uh, really great seeing seeing him again after after he was uh, away for uh, some months. So, but I don't talk to him now. I don't. <laughs> no, I'm sure one day he'd love to to be the the Liverpool manager like you know Jurgen Klopp, and I'm sure he must have learned a lot as a coach working with obviously younger players but he must have, have learned a lot from Jurgen Klopp as well was Klopp at the academy much whilst you were there did did they have that sort of, of relationship where they would sort of learn from one another I think uh, Steven talked more to, to Klopp than than the team players did I didn't I think I spoke to him once when we had like a friendly game under 23s against the first team at Melwood uh but he wasn't much at the academy when I was there. I think now that with the first team coming to Kirby, it's going to be closer. And uh, But the first team players weren't really much at uh, the academy when I was there. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, you, you signed for, for Liverpool at, at 14. Everton and, and Manchester United and, and Ajax and Manchester City were all interested as well. Were were there any other teams that I've missed off there? And, and why, why was it that you picked Liverpool in the end? Uh... I think you got them all. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I, I keep saying that me being a Liverpool fan wasn't any of the reason, but of course it's in the back of your head when you when you have the choice. But the most important reason was it felt like uh, like a home, uh, even though I'm from Norway, which is far away. It it feels very friendly there, and compared to the because it, Manchester City, 
uh, where it felt more like a rivalry when when I came there. It was like I was a competitor and challenger for, say, a midfielder there. Uh, but in Liverpool, it was I was straight into the group. Everyone talked to me, uh, made me feel comfortable. And of course, the level was probably the highest out of all the clubs I went to. Um, so it just it felt very right to to go there, and uh, I'm really happy that that was the decision I made. Uh, yeah. And when you you came to Liverpool, then there was lots of, of talk and lots of expectation. Obviously, there's a lot of Norwegian Liverpool fans and that sort of thing. How did? <laughs> Well, first of all, were you were you aware of that sort of thing? And and if you were, how did you sort of go about dealing with that? Uh, yeah, I was aware of it. Uh, when I played, even a a game where where I'm from in the small town in in Norway, it's, there was always some people there to watch me and that wanted to talk to me after. And when I went to tournaments and stuff like that, it was a lot of media and stuff like that. But uh, I think because it started from a really young young age, I was when I was fourteen, fifteen, I was already quite good at uh, just blocking it out and focusing on football. So uh, when I was fifteen, sixteen, it didn't really affect me at all, uh, even though I knew there was people talking and uh, and stuff like that. But uh, and it it never really affected me. And just a last question then before we do let you go. What's your plan now going forward? You're obviously a Rosenborg player. You're getting fairly regular senior minutes. What's the, the plan for the next couple of, of seasons? Uh, you know, I played a lot this season, maybe more than I expected. So I do want to play more and more and get give you more starts. So uh, I think which the coach has, has said to me already that I have to just keep doing my best in training and develop and uh, the playtime will come. We have a, a really good midfield now, so uh, it's really hard to get into into the Rosenborg midfield at the moment, but I just do my best every day and uh, hopefully next season I will get more starts and, and be, a, be a key player. Yeah, absolutely. Well, best of luck with that and, and thank you very much for, for speaking to us. We won't keep Thanks you any a lot. longer. My All pleasure. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye See bye. You later. Yeah. Edvard Tagset speaking to us here on the Academy Show on the Blood Red Channel. Matt, great to uh, great to have had the chance to speak with him. Yeah, absolutely. He's a really great guy. He was someone who I spoke to a, a little bit over the, the sort of course of, of him being at, at Liverpool for those couple of years. Obviously, loads of, of Norwegian Liverpool fans and, and that sort of thing. So it's it's always one that, that people have had their eye on. And yeah, he was obviously. Really, really highly rated. It was a slight surprise that he left when he did. A big favourite, as we discussed, of Stephen Jones. He's, he's one of those players that, that he worked with. And I suppose it, it, was, it was always going to be difficult for every single player from, from that group to, to make it at the top level. But the fact that you know he has, has gone out now to, to Rosenborg, as we said, and, and has gone and, and played, I think, something like 21 of the, the 25 matches that they've played so far this season... That just goes to show, really, that you know these players are, are really elite, top-level footballers, and, and even if they don't make it to the first team at, at Liverpool, there's you know plenty of opportunities across the continent and, and further afield as well to to go and, and make a, a career for yourself in the game. So yeah, it, it's great to see Eddie doing it as well as he is. I'm sure a few Liverpool fans will have sort of read his name and, and stuff over the the last uh, few seasons, but yeah, that's what he's up to now, and, and best of luck to, to him for the future. Yeah, as you say, best of luck to him and we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on how he, he gets on. Hopefully see him in the Champions League before too long. Let's get to the weekend then. Massive weekend for the 23s and the 18s. The under-23s, we'll start with them first playing Chelsea. And we'll get to the 18s in a bit who, uh, of course, had a uh, mini Merseyside derby themselves. And I suppose maybe a bit of a, a score to settle for the senior side. But uh, the 23s against Chelsea, a great result. Yeah, absolutely. It was a really experienced Chelsea side. £21 million Baba Rahman at left-back. £35 million Danny Drinkwater in midfield as well. So it was a strange sort of Chelsea team at the academy today. But yeah, goals from Reese Williams, Jake Kane, Liam Miller. It was a header for the first one at a Jake Kane corner. Kane then scored a free kick. 
just nipping it in at, at the near post and, and then Liam Miller, a penalty after Jack Byrne had been fouled. So, yeah, Liverpool, you know, two up inside 18 minutes, absolutely in control, thoroughly deserve that victory. And it's a, been a, a big week, certainly for, for Reese Williams, but for Jake Kane as well, it, it probably went a, a little bit under the radar that he was actually on the bench for, for Liverpool's first team against Ajax on Wednesday. So, yeah, for, for both of those players to come back to, to obviously get more game time, more minutes, that was, you know, a big thing for them. And, and just three days after the highs of, of playing in the Champions League, I think probably deliberately for, for both of those players, straight back down to earth, straight back to, to the academy where they've spent so many sort of seasons over their time at Liverpool. It was a little bit of a, a reminder, really, for them not to, to get too far ahead. Obviously, there's uh, been a, a big pat on the back, a big well done to, to get yourself into that squad for the Champions League. But yeah, this was uh, a little bit of a, a reality check, even though it obviously it was a... A very experienced Chelsea side, as we said, with a, a few familiar faces. So, yeah, Chelsea did get a, a late penalty and, and they did score that. So it finished 3 1, but very, very comfortable afternoon for them, even you know with the, the players on that Chelsea side. So, yeah, Byron Nutas' team very much impressing once again. If they play Arsenal next week, that'll be a, another difficult game. But, you know, if they play anything like what they did on Saturday, then you'd imagine they can get another three points. Yeah, and before we get on to the under-18s, talking on the 23s, and Reese Williams in particular said in the, the intro there may be a, an opportunity in the first team lurking. Jurgen Klopp was asked specifically about Reese Williams in his press conference ahead of the weekend's game with Sheffield United, and he spoke about him, he spoke about Billy the Kid, obviously Billy Cometio, and also Nat Phillips. Obviously Liverpool now will have to, if there is any further injuries at the centre of defence, they will have to look to the academy, won't they? Yeah, absolutely. I think, obviously, we know how highly rated Billy Cometio is. We know how much of a, a big prospect he is, literally, a, a, as well as metaphorically. But, yeah, I mean, look, Rhys Williams is, is the one that got the nod on, on Wednesday night. He's the one who, I think, leads the way at this moment in time. Jurgen Klopp did say, you know, yesterday, Nat Phillips very nearly, you know, earned himself a transfer away from Liverpool. It looked like he was going to go this summer. That then broke down last minute. Potentially, he says that, that Liverpool could use him at, at some point. I wonder whether that is just sort of Jurgen Klopp being polite, if you like, and, and keeping him interested, keeping him around. Because, you know, for me, both Reese Williams and, and Billy Cometio have higher ceilings than, than Phillips. I think it would have been the right thing for, for Phillips to move on this summer. But yeah, I think at this moment in time, Reese Williams, you'd have to, to put at the top of, of that list just because of that Champions League debut and, and how well he did. But it's it's certainly something to, to watch out for going forward. We know that, that Liverpool don't have too many options at this moment in time in terms of their centre-backs. So even though they don't have an EFL Cup or an FA Cup thing before um, January and, and potentially one or two new signings could come in, in in that month, I think there will be a couple of opportunities. Certainly, you know, one or two of these names are going to be named on the, the bench for Liverpool going forward. But, you know, I, I don't think it'll be the last time, for example, that we see Rhys Williams come off the bench. No, certainly not. And we will keep a very keen eye on that one indeed. Then let's get to the under-18s. Last weekend, of course, it was all about the Merseyside derby for the first team. This weekend, a mini Merseyside derby for the 18s. And, well, they put them away, didn't they? Yeah, the mini, mini derby. Unfortunately, no media were allowed in. So Paul Gorse couldn't get over there. But, you know, we did keep an eye on the game and, and Liverpool, again, very much impressing. It was a, a brilliant day for, for Liverpool's academy sides, as I said, wins for the 16s, the 18s and the 23s. And each of them just a, as comfortable as each other, really. The uh, the under 18s also 2 nil up inside 18 minutes. Strange sort of coincidence in, in both those matches. But yeah, they went momentarily top of the table. Uh, Middlesbrough and Manchester City, who were both ahead of them in that league table, did actually go on and, and win later in the day. But yeah, at uh, one o'clock on, on Saturday, Liverpool were top of the league, deservedly so, because you know to, to go and beat Everton as comfortably as they did, 4-0 it was in the end, 4-0 at half-time, you know, to, to go and, and score and, and win a derby game of that magnitude in that sort of manner, I just think it it really does go to show, you know, how impressive this group of, of youngsters are. So, yeah, it was uh, a really important win, I think, for, for Mark Ridge Wilkinson and, and his players, obviously not just to get to the top of the table, but to, to do that against Everton as well. Really interesting to see Malcamo Fraundorf, who I think was my one to watch last time we did this show, his first competitive goal after spinning, of course, from Hoffenheim during the summer. So, yeah, if anybody doesn't know too much about him, feel free to, to check out the last show. There's also a, 
an interview with a couple of his former coaches that I've done on the, the Liverpool website not too long ago. So, yeah, he's a, a really highly rated player. Good to see him get his first goal. And I'm sure, you know, he is someone that over the next few weeks it is going to impress a lot of people because from the, the limited amount that I've seen of him and from what I've heard from, you know, people at the academy, from people at his former club, he is very much highly rated. And, and Liverpool did, in fact, beat Bayern Munich to a signature this summer. So, yeah, a, a big coup for them. And I think Mel Camus Fraundorf might be one to watch again going forward. Yeah, certainly. Uh, Lee Jonas and Axel Waltman also on the score sheet. Reese Welch with an own goal for the Blues as well in that 4 0 win for the under 18. So before we get to our one to watch, let's have a quick uh, chat about Harvey Ellen, a little bit of a special loan watch section of the show. Of course, he moved to Blackburn Rovers on the uh, domestic deadline on loan for the rest of the season, made his championship debut in midweek in the three defeat against Watford. And on Saturday, managed to grab his first senior goal, certainly in league football. He did score for the uh, under-21s in the Czech Trade Trophy last season, but his first goal in uh, senior football, we say, in, in sort of league action in a 4-0 win away to Coventry and also got an assist in that game and by all means took all the headlines. Yeah, a brilliant performance by all accounts. I mean, on Wednesday, we saw how excited Blackburn fans were to see Harvey Elliott. There was, you know, plenty of, of reaction and, and stuff like that from, from that game. But again, this was just a, another step up for him, really. He slotted in straight into the championship. Easy to forget that he's, you know, not long turned 17. He's still so, so young. But yeah, slotted in straight away. Got that goal. Really nice finish at him with his, his foot. It was uh, one that he would expect to score, but it's one of those that you've got to be in the right place at, at the right time in order to do that. And then the assist uh, for the fourth goal, uh, really nice move, really well worked and you know, put into the, the perfect area in where I think it Ben Brett who possibly scored. It might, might not have been actually, it might have been somebody else, but whoever it was, a, a brilliant assist for, for Harvey Elliott. And yeah, Lanks Live, our sister newspaper over in Blackburn, I believe, they gave an eight out of ten in his uh, first, uh, well, in the the first player ratings of, uh, of his Blackburn career, I should say. So, yeah, a uh, a decent performance from him. Very much uh, an impressive start to, to his championship season. And Blackburn are among the favourites, I think, fair to say, to to get promoted up to the Premier League. And and Harvey Elliott, I would think, would be a a key reason for that. Yeah, the assist, as you say, was for, for Sam Gallagher. But uh, yeah, a, a great pick out from him. And he's he's in a Blackburn team that includes us. And Lewis Holtby, of course, former Tottenham Hotspur player and himself, once upon a time, a very, very highly rated young player, having come out of uh, German football, of course. So if he can learn anything from him, whilst he's at East Park, then that could, uh, could well serve Liverpool well in the future. Before we go, then, let's do our one to watch. Who are we uh, checking in on this time, Matt? So I've gone sort of slightly left field with this one. I've gone with Harvey Blair, who is uh, only just signed his first professional contract for Liverpool at the time since we did the last show. So only a couple of weeks ago, he signed for Liverpool from Manchester United at the age of 12, only turned 17 last month in September. So he's now a first year scholar for, for Mark Bridge Wilson's team. So very direct, quick, tricky, exactly the kind of player that, that sort of gets you off your seat and you really enjoy watching playing football so he can play either side of, of the forward line. And we haven't seen too much of him for the under 18 so far this season. He has only made one appearance. I think that was against Stoke City. But yeah, he's missed the, the last three games or last four games now, I should say, with, with Everton as well. But I'm not too sure whether there's a little bit of an injury there or, or what that is. But certainly, I think one to, to see going forward because, you know, from the, the limited minutes that we've seen from him so far this season, I would imagine that he's going to work his way a little bit more regularly, I think, into the system over the next couple of months. So, yeah, Harvey Blair is my one to watch. Probably not one that, that too many people will have, have heard of or, or seen too much, but certainly from from what I've seen of him, very, very talented and, and could well establish himself for the under-18s. Certainly, you know, by the end of this season, if not by the turn of the year. Interesting stuff. We'll see how he goes. If you want more from the Academy, remember to check out the match reports for the wins over Chelsea and Everton, respectively, for the 23s and 18s. You can find those on the Liverpool Echo website. Of course, there'll be more from Match Chat with Edvard Tagseth to come as well across the Liverpool Echo website as well. And until next time here on the Academy Show, thanks for joining us here on Blood Red. It's bye for now.